What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense. It's not going to be a Casamigos night, but it's going to be a little bit of a Casamigos night. <laughs> Y'all hit the like button as the intro plays. I went and found an oldie but a goodie. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. I want right. to make it make one. Big moves. Surfer. I used to look like this. No, stop. I fly above. I, I, I fly above. I, I fly. No, that want you. No, I fly above. I, I. <laughs> okay, y'all. So, <laughs> all right. Uh, we got somebody new in the chat. Uh, she said, "Hello, everybody. This is my first time in the chat. Now I'm gonna give y'all. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a warning. We're a family over here, but we're also some straight shooters. So <laughs> y'all be nice. Everybody say hello. Um, to I. I want to get this right. Is it Tosti? Hopefully, I got it right. So welcome. Um, we're straight shooters. So a straight shooter. Pow pow. <laughs> and." Okay, so anyway, y'all, we gave Dre a hell. All y'all did, not me. Y'all were giving Dre a hell, but are y'all gonna have the same energy for Drake? Drea is 40, she's pregnant by a 22 year old. Drake is dating, doing whatever. Lotto's 21 year old sister. Are y'all gonna give him hell? Now, Drea does have a son that is the same age as her baby daddy. But all things being equal, Drake is now dating somebody with a similar age gap. Have we reached a point where dating, I guess, maybe maybe within a 10-year range is now considered predatory across the board? Or are we still having this double standard where a man can get away with it and a woman can't? So they posted the proof. Um, it says, Drake's romantic history will always be a topic of discussion between the women he publicly dated and the content of his music. The 37-year-old rapper was spotted out with Lotto's little younger sister, Brooklyn, who's actually a really pretty girl. Um, so is Lotto. I'll say this. Lotto is beautiful. But sometimes when I see Lotto in pictures, I think I'm looking at Giselle from Housewives of Potomac. <laughs> Somebody said it's all disgusting. <laughs> Uh, Yolanda says the men never catch no flack. Whose birthday is it? What's up, Noya? Well, you know you're close to my heart because I'm from Louisiana too. Happy birthday, lovely Noya. Oh, I wish I had my birthday song queued up. Before the live ends, I'll try to put up my birthday song. <laughs> but yeah, are y'all going to give him the same kind of flack? Let me see. Um, footage surfaced on Friday of the two leaving a restaurant with an entourage. It's unclear whether an employee or a customer recorded the video, but they intentionally captured the footage seek discreetly. The six guy dating the Sunday service rapper's younger sister would not be a complete shock as his close friend, 21 Savage, has been romantically linked to Lotto for a few years. And Lotto is real tight-lipped about who her man is, but she loves to say, my man, my man, my man, but she's super tight-lipped. <laughs> <laughs> the Atlanta rapper was recently seen with a tattoo behind his ear, which reads Alyssa, Lotto's real name. She has a similar tattoo in the same spot, which reads Shea, 21's real name. So this is the footage of them out on a date. Thank you. I 
I I do think that there is a space for very mature people in their 20s to date older. I'm not going to lie. Um, do I think that everybody is mature and level? I mean, you got to think some people are already married at like, what, like 16 to 18 back in the day. They probably already had their first children back in the day. Things have shifted. We're now a society where we think a lot more. We're open to a lot. We're a lot more worldly. I don't know that I could ever date down, but that doesn't mean that I see everybody who is dating with an over the over a 10 year age gap is in the wrong. If you're, I was listening to the breakfast club and there was a woman saying that she was dating, she was 33 and she was dating a 19 year old, which means that she was 32 and he was 18. I don't know what I would be doing with somebody who is in high school, even if you're 18 and you're the age of consent. I don't like that. Oh, no, the it's them. <laughs> Somebody said I didn't even see a female. The third person. Thank, thank you. Than being polite. It'll always be a double standard. Like everybody is saying that Megan is, you know, an HOE. But technically, Drake has a Drake's body count is long. And you know, we're not just talking about like the Rihanna of it all. Drake has dated so many Houston strippers. Drake, Drake's baby mama, who we now know as Sophie used to be known as a real mistress of Atlanta. It's amazing how having a baby with Drake changes, but this is Drake's baby mama. Hi, so my name is Rosé. I'm actually a French model. I'm 22 years old. She says she's 22, y'all. This was 11 years ago. Model, I'm 22 years old. I was is anybody buying that? Anybody buying that? She was a she was an adult star, but now you get with Drake, and you you are adult performer to painter who paints for the Pope. That's the Drake effect. This was just 11 years ago. So uh, her Real Mistresses of Atlanta debut was 11 years ago. So that would make Sophie 30, 33. She said it, not me. She said she was, <laughs> she said she was, um, let's see it. That's Drake's baby mama. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me put it on this one. It's so luxurious, everything. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. That's what we want. Something very luxurious. Bye. Really? Hey, Have I ever been involved with a married man before? I would say, unfortunately, yes. And now she draws for the Pope. It was Johnny Blaze from Love and Hip Hop. Johnny Blaze claimed that she lost the baby that she was carrying for Drake while she was on stage performing. But nobody calls him a hoe.
Nobody calls him a hoe. But Megan, everybody else is. Y'all laid into Drea. If Drea is a predator, by the same standard, Drake is a predator. What's up, AT2? Oh, we got a super chat. Nancy Brown, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Yeah, I mean, let's see. Drake takes younger because less is required. He's definitely a... <laughs> What's up, Lex? Call the popo. I mean, is there a space where y'all feel like a 21-year-old, 22-year-old could maybe date a 40-year-old because of their life experiences? Let me see if I can get that Breakfast Club interview up. Let's see. Mm, here we go. I keep popping into like every. I'm 30. He ain't lie. When y'all met, he was 18. Just because you're 19 now, that's a year into the relationship. Charlemagne, of course. Uh 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 uh. uh. Mm -mm. 19. 19. Charlemagne don't like any of these kind of conversations, anything about predatory behavior, because he knows that the arrow points back to him. Uh, Beverly, happy Tuesday, Casa. You know, this is just one drink. I'm being good because I went to my personal trainer today. Um, but then I went and played video games with one of my friends last night and I found out that Skittles has gummies. Y'all, these things are the devil. Don't do it. They tell you don't do drugs. Don't do these Skittles gummies because you will knock out this whole bag real quick. And yeah, I did steal it from my friend. <laughs> um, Charlemagne has allegations that he took a woman's ability to say no away back in the day. And that has, um, yeah, they're gummies. It's Skittles gummies. Um, that has like, this has followed him all the way from the beginning of his career to present day. So he doesn't really like these conversations. But what are y'all thinking about this woman? The 33 year old with the 19 year old. What do you mean? She met him at 18. What do you mean him at school? Her mom sent her to basically a high school stool, student, maybe somebody fresh out of high school, and told him, told her, he'll smoke with you. Is anybody else hearing this? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to be with a 19 year old and she's 33. She's embarrassed if he's in a job that's not earning enough money. If that ain't some. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> when your mama is telling you to go find the high school kid because he knows how to roll one, where, like, where are you from again? Oh, ah, the ghetto, the ghetto, the ghetto. Um, so um, Michael says, Mims, do you find it weird that Jay-Z was trying to, to date Foxy Brown, Brandy, Aaliyah, Maya, and Beyonce when they were turning 17, 18 back in the day? So as far as I know, still know I have a really good memory. Dame Dash did an interview in the early 2000s where he talked about Jay-Z trying to scoop Aaliyah up from him. Now, the dates that they gave this would have made Leah, Aaliyah 20 to 21. Um, R. Kelly was the one who got married to Aaliyah at 15, but I don't know of any other time after that, other than Jay-Z and Dame Dash, did we hear about Aaliyah really dating anybody? Uh, I did hear about him with Maya, but I thought Maya was of age. Like, I think Maya is almost a similar age to Jay-Z. Let's see. Maya age. Maya's 44. Jay-Z is, Jay-Z is, oh, he's 10 years older. I know, I don't know. Now, I did hear some stuff about Foxy Brown. I did hear some allegations made about him and Foxy Brown, but as far as I've ever seen Foxy talk about it, she says that the allegations were not true. But do I think it's weird? Yes. 
to be honest with you, let me tell you what I think Jay-Z had been trying to do. Jay-Z definitely wanted, like always had his eye on the prize to date and be with somebody who would help his career excel. Jay-Z was at the top of his game, but if you notice, he tried to get with Aaliyah when Aaliyah was the it girl. He tried to get with Maya when Maya was the it girl. Same with Beyonce. And he still cheated on her when Beyonce is a, a, there's not a bigger star in the world right now than Beyonce. So, but Jay-Z, it felt like he dated for, it felt like he dated for a business relationship. If you think about the people that he always tried to date being at the top of the game in the same industry that he was in. Uh, not you thought Foxy was older than Jay. I heard that they did date. Image and status, yeah, definitely. Like Kanye with Kim. But to hear Jay-Z tell it's true. None of it's true. None of it's true. It's BS. They made it up. They lie. <laughs> um, Somebody just said that that's not true. Let's see. Where'd you go? Um, I am Himawaria says they did not, meaning who didn't date? Let me know. Um, we got another super chat. Uh, Beverly, thank you. She said, no judgment, just the nickname. Oh, I don't mind it. At this point, we should be getting a Casamigos endorsement. So somebody hit up Cindy Crawford or the Margarita Lady or shit, Saucy Santana. Uh, go ahead and hook up a meeting between me and uh cindy crawford's husband so we can go ahead and get a casamigos uh <laughs> so we could do a casamigos uh endorsement and then probably some type of giveaway i didn't talked about them enough um they took advantage of that girl yeah because in the dame dash interview he said that him and jay-z were actually living in the same place at the time that they were both trying to get at Aaliyah. Um, AT2 said it was a power move, almost like an arrangement. Beyonce and Jay-Z always felt like the industry put them together. <laughs> oh, wait, I got a name right. Y'all, that never happens. I will butcher a name. So this is a first. I will not forget. <laughs> okay, but anyway, in the replay gang, y'all let me know, why isn't Drake getting the same type of smoke that Drea got? Because people went in. As she announced her pregnancy, they called her every name in the book. Um, Y'all got to lock Drea up. Drea got a 22-year-old son. Drea is a disgusting... Uh, mm, having a baby by a 21-year-old and you is 40. And you 40 is some nasty, predatory work. Don't she got a son? How would she feel if some old, ma old woman came sniffing behind her child? Having a baby for a check is deplorable behavior. No, y'all, no. I don't know about none of this because I'm practically a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> expect my practically a virgin shirt to be part of the merch <laughs> if you see any practically the virgin shirts come out before mine does then y'all know they were watching this live <laughs> anyway i want them to i mean i really do feel like What was this gift? What did I just click on? Did anybody respond? Her oldest son is the same age. She's only she has also an eight year old son. What's worse? She babysat him. <laughs> Why are they doing this to? Okay, do I think it's predatory? Yes, I think that Drea. I feel like Drea ended her relationship with her baby daddy or her ex because his contract expired. They broke up in 2019. He lost his contract to play football in 2019. We do kind of have to call a spade a spade because I saw, um, I saw on the neighborhood talk where Maya from Mia from Potomac has said that her husband was a predator because he cut off the funds when she said she was going to divorce him. Let me see if I can find that real quick. I don't know that that's pretty. Like, I feel like that was a business relationship. She got with the man because he had money. 
when the money was gone, she wanted out. The money was his, so he took it back. I don't really know, like. Let me find this thing. Oh, this was messy, y'all. Now, I told you guys a while back that part of the reason that Drea and um, Gilbert Arena's wife didn't get along was because J Drea was messing with that woman's husband. And then they ended up having to be castmates. What's her name? Um, she wasn't that smart. She Gilbert Arena's wife. What was her name? Laura. Laura Govan. Damn, if they only knew. But like, I was shocked too, though. Like, like that day when I was riding home with Philly in the car. Yeah, I don't no. know if I can tell that story. If you want me to tell that story, no, nah, no, nah, she's a mother now. <laughs> she's a mother now. Yeah, you can't do that because that day was that, that day changed my she life. I ain't gonna lie, that day changed my life. That's when Swaggy P was like, "Okay, man, I got this." Is what NBA is about. Hey, listen, I, hey. NBA, hey, listen, I'll let you know this is. Yeah. I mean, I'm riding in a car. He in the back seat. <laughs> I turn my head. This nigga against it. Huh? Nah, nah. <laughs> what was you doing in that back seat, Gil? Huh? What was you doing in that back seat? Who went to the strip yeah. club? Uh, pregnant, pregnant. Got the young boy. Damn. If they only knew. But, like, I was shocked too. <laughs> Got the young yeah. boy. The reason I like Drea is because Drea is who Drea is. If they tell this story, she won't care. Drea never cares about anything. She cares about the clout and the money. And you have to respect the person like that because you know where to put them. You don't trust them. You don't trust them around your 22-year-olds. I don't bit more believe that Drea is in love with that young boy. But Drea is, you know, in terms of... Drea's business model, dating for money, is a part of that. And we can say she's a business owner, but if y'all tell me that Drea was truly in love with this boy and wanted to make a child with him so that they could eventually get married and live happily ever after, I would say you probably are not a straight show. <laughs> Does anybody believe that this was true love? And I don't believe that it was a mistake because you're too old not to know to use a, use a condom. If you're going to do that, she's in love with that money. <laughs> but I mean, you know, Dre has never purported to be anything different. So that's why you say, I say you got to, you know who she is and she's unapologetic about it. Um, Betty Spaghetti says, is it weird? Yes, but they're both adults. His parents should have taught him about women like Dre before he signed that contract, period. Absolutely. But at 22, you're going to do what you want. At 22, you didn't come up with money. Now you have millions in the bank. He, When Drea was on Basketball Wives 10 years ago, he was probably like a 12-year-old boy fiending over her back then. Now the object of your affection is right in front of your face. What are you going to do as a 22-year-old millionaire? Um. And then men love it. So what's the problem? Mind your own son. Jalen is not y'all son. <laughs> uh, does she act like a little girl around him? Usually women get really feminine and bubbly around the men they love or swoon over. I don't know. I don't really know. I think Dre is just one of those pretty people, but I've never seen her change. She It looks like she talks to men and women, people she's fighting with. It's always like a resting bee face with Drea. Um, but yeah, to her point, um, to her point, these are two consenting adults. Drake and Lotto's sister are two consenting adults. Um, have any of you guys in the chat ever dated older is the question. Because I do think that when it's you, you probably think I could do it. But when you turn the question around, would you want your children, your brother, your sister to be with somebody much older? Probably not. But I'm pretty sure there's multiple people in this chat currently and in the replay gang who has dated somebody much older. This other lady on The Breakfast Club said that her husband was 40 years older than her and he worked on the plantation his whole life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But I do think that things are shifting. But let's get to another predator. I think we should do uh I think we should do Wendy's. We should do Wendy's um husband. Next time. Okay. Where is it? I got a lot to click through. Are y'all gonna y'all want me to share the link to the real mistresses of Atlanta so y'all can get some more insight? From the beginning, I knew he was married. He told me about it, but we were hanging out, we were having fun, and there was just a really good connection between us. <laughs> oh, where is it? Okay. Windy, 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 windy. Wendy Williams' ex, Kevin Hunter, demands to see her bank records in divorce case after judge claims she has no money. Um, in, in new divorce filings exclusively obtained by The Sun, Wendy's ex demanded to see the star's financial records that he claimed were promised to him during mediation in the case. On December 8, 2022, I attended a mediation with Wendy's counsel and Wendy's new court appointed guardian attorney, Sabrina Morrison. Oh, guys, we got like what? We got like 1,500 in the chat. Let's see. We don't even have 500 likes. Definitely hit that like button. It's a free way to support the channel. Oh, and I got a I got a cash app yesterday after the live was over. So I definitely want to shout you out. Um, let's see. April, thank you so much for the cash app. April sent that. Um April sent that. And it looks like um Um, and I think Ms. Dora, I think, I think you are sending this cash app stuff wrong. I think you are requesting money, but it says that you were supporting the channel. So I think maybe you meant to send this as cash, but you sent in a request. So just FYI, but, um, thank you, April and Leslie for the cash apps. Sorry, let me put this up. Dang, I have too much stuff open. Okay. Um, in mediation, Wendy's counsel and guardian agreed to provide statements to accounts and bank records they claimed to have gotten permission from the New York court to provide. Kevin 51 said, despite supposed assurances from his ex-guardian and her attorney that they would provide him with Wendy's bank records, they never materialized. By December 19th, after reportedly failing to get any further correspondence from Wendy's team, Kevin said he emailed the mediator and copied all parties addressing lack of transparency and bad faith in their lack of candor in mediation. Basically, he's broke, y'all. His woman don't want him now that he's broke. She only wanted him when he was Kevin with the money. Now you want to get all up in Wendy's business because I thought you, I thought that you were a viable manager. If you were a viable manager and Wendy didn't blacklist you, why haven't you worked since Wendy's show has been off air? Why are you destitute now that Wendy's money is not accessible to you? That doesn't make sense. Do you have a job? Or were you solely relying, relying on these payments for the rest of your life? He said he continued reaching out without further communication from Wendy's team regarding his request for his ex's financial records when finally, in February 8th, 2023, a letter was received from Wendy's counsel stating that the Guardian was only providing bank statements for the months of November and December of 2022. Kevin claimed that the offer to review the two months of Wendy's bank statements also had other stipulations attached that were not previously discussed or agreed to. The letter, the letter further stated that I could only review the documents in the mediator's office. This was not the agreement. The agreement was, for, was from all of the records from the date of dissolution until current. Kevin has essentially reopened their divorce case in court after out-of-court mediation yielded no results. Now, y'all, they are in Jersey. It is very difficult. I don't know how the son got this information. I don't know who leaked it. But um, it's very hard to get this stuff. But I will definitely try to get my hands on the court documents. According to Wendy's ex, he had severance payments being made to him based off his marital settlement agreement with Wendy. He claimed that those payments suddenly ceased in January 2022 when Wendy's bank, Wells Fargo, locked her out of the accounts. And they suggested a guardianship hearing. Wendy was ultimately placed in guardianship under attorney Sabrina Morrissey later that year. 
One source close to the, neg the negotiations exclusively revealed to the U.S. Sun that during one meeting between the parties in December of 2022, the mediator, a former New Jersey judge, told Wendy's ex and his team, the reality is that there is no money. Now, do y'all believe that? Do y'all believe the judge? Because now the judge has come into question, y'all. Allegedly, um, Wendy's guardian and the judge have sit on the board of something together. And there are, um, what is that called? When you're supporting somebody who's running for office. Allegedly, Wendy's guardian has submitted payments to help this judge get elected. So the judge does not want Kevin or none of these people want Kevin to actually see any of Wendy's financial stuff for the year of 2023. But you can comfortably say that there's no money as the judge. Does that seem right? It, it, a manipulator. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're telling me. That's what I feel like. How is the judge telling you there's absolutely no money? That seems like a really flippant statement to come from somebody who is supposed to be an officer of the court. The reality is that there is no money. Well, if that's the case, then why aren't the records provided so that he can see that there's no money and then case closed? Uh, TG, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate you. Um, disbar the judge campaign contributions. Yeah. Thank you. Conflicted. Yes. All that. I'll be looking a little bit more into that a little bit later, but yeah, that's what, that's what I've heard so far. Um, the insider was okay. The mediation sessions were aimed at resolving Kevin's claims that he is owed money earmarked for him in their marital settlement agreement. The insider claimed that despite the former judge's statement about Wendy's financial affairs, there was no proof offered to them to support the allegation that the former TV star is broke. Are y'all hearing that? There was no proof offered to them to support the allegation that the former TV star is broke. The insider, not that I want Kevin to get her money, but the end goal is for Wendy to get their money. So if they are saying this in court where this is recorded and now public record, then to me, it feels like there's more stuff shrouded in secrecy. You're just putting it out there. Oh, she's broke. She don't have no money. Well, if she's broke and she don't have any money, how are you paying the guardian? How are you paying the guardian if he's broke with no, if Wendy's broke with no money? Um, this insider was not only involved in the divorce negotiations in late 2022, but they were also involved in some of the early guardianship proceedings between Wendy's team at the time and Wells Fargo earlier that year. The financially astute source who is uniquely qualified in handling complex financial matters said that when Wendy's bank first petitioned to start guardianship proceedings, her Wells Fargo account purportedly held ample funds, at least according to a ledger that they reviewed. Wendy's Wells Fargo accounts were frozen at the start of 2022 due to the bank's allegations that the star may be a victim of financial exploitation. Now, Kevin has said that the financial exploitation is Wendy's sister. But I think that all fingers point back to Kevin. From the time her Wells Fargo accounts were frozen and when the source claimed they reviewed a ledger showing ample funds, oh, sorry, um, the insider said that the, at the time of the U.S. Sun's report in July of 2023, that neither they nor Wendy's ex-husband had been provided with any sort of up-to-date reporting of her current financial records, despite multiple requests to Wendy's guardian to provide them. The insider argued that it is Wells Fargo, not Wendy, that stopped the payments to Kevin that were agreed to in the marital settlement agreement, and that it, that it was the guardian who continued on with the payment stoppage. My issue with all of this is those agreements were made when Wendy was still making $10 million a year as a talk show host. That time has come and gone. Why does Kevin think that he does not need to get a job? Just as I thought. Trash. Just my opinion. He's a kind artist. Uh, the insider question, how does the financial advisor or guardian get to stop paying Kevin something that was set out in a previous court order? 
Wendy had enough money when they divorced to pay Kevin out in one shot at that point. And then she had enough in, even in the guardianship addendum to pay him out. So where would the money have gone? And why haven't we been able to see any of the accounts to show whatever happened there? Wendy's guardian, Sabrina Morrissey, has not yet responded to the U.S. Sun's request for comment at the time of publication. During Wendy's docuseries, Where is Wendy Williams, which aired on Lifetime last month, the star said while discussing her guardianship, I have no money. Here's the thing. They paid Wendy for this. So I bet you Kevin is going to try to garnish or get money from Lifetime. Again, you're spending all this money on attorneys. You are a, you know, you were managing Wendy Williams. Where are your other clients? Um, Too Adorable says, how about Kevin start paying his bills instead of mooching off Wendy? I'm with you. We got like 1,600 in the chat. Let's see. Where we are. Yeah, we don't even have a thousand likes, y'all. Uh, definitely hit the like button. Like I said, it's a free way to support the channel. Wendy's guardian, Sabrina Morrissey, has not yet responded to the U.S. Sun's request for comment at the time of publication. We're okay, blah, blah, blah. We already know what she's been diagnosed with. We know that she is suffering from alcohol-related brain damage. They told her that her alcohol abuse had done permanent damage to the layers in her brain. She was warned then that if she continued to drink, the damage would only get worse. They told her that if she kept drinking, she would continue to grow more forgetful, that she wouldn't remember people's names, and eventually she could, she could forget who people even were. After a comment call regarding the U.S. Sun story was sent to Wendy's team, they released a statement saying that the star had been diagnosed with frontal, frontotemporal dementia and aphasia in 2023. The decision to share this news was difficult and made after careful consideration, not only to advocate for understanding and compassion for Wendy, but to raise awareness about aphasia and frontotemporal dementia and to support the thousands of others facing similar circumstances. You know, um, I read today that Sheree's mom was diagnosed with dementia and I wasn't really, I thought that that was common knowledge from the time that she went missing. But it was officially today that Sheree said that um, her mom is suffering from dementia. It's a really horrible, horrible situation for anybody who has it. And even for Sheree, I feel really bad because her father just passed away around one year ago today. And then her mom gets her mom gets diagnosed with dementia. So I feel really bad for Sheree. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's Sheree from The Housewives. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that was it. So what do I think about Kevin? I think Kevin needs to get a job. I think Kevin needs to get a job yesterday. And the fight for Wendy's money constantly is like he doesn't even have any shame. What are you doing? So Wendy's payments stop and you can't pay anything. I was listening to this. Um, I was listening to like an old Wendy episode. And she was talking about Kevin from her mom's funeral. And she thought he was like really fly. Let me see. The rest of us, I'm like, he's that guy. He had the everywhere. I just think he's that guy. He had the double R. I sat in the back seat. Here you go. Out to eat. So this is Wendy actually talking about her divorce, her mom's funeral, and Kevin coming to her aid at the funeral. But listen to what she says. Move on in the name of the service and Papa and the rest of us. And my son said, yeah. And that's why we went out to eat afterwards, the three of us. He had the double R, you know, he, he, he's that guy. Meaning he pulls up in a Rolls Royce. So as of the time that Wendy's mom had passed away and Kevin was still getting payments, Kevin pulled up to Wendy's mom's funeral in a Rolls Royce that Wendy had purchased. And Wendy's like, yeah, you know, he's that guy. He smelled really good. He had Dolce Gabbana all the way down. Wendy low-key created that monster because he was just a regular street dude when she met him. She put him up to manage her career that she had worked to cultivate for so long. He got very accustomed to the lifestyle. At some point, he got tired of her, probably due to, <coughs> excuse me, probably a lot to do with what little Kevin said. His mom was an alcoholic the entire life. But you use that woman's money 
to support a whole nother woman. You pull up to her mom's funeral in a Rolls Royce that was purchased with her money. As soon as her money's out of the equation, all your cars are gone and you can't even pay your mortgage. Right. He should have learned to budget. It's, he's not my favorite person, y'all. Um, So let's get into this foolishness. So I told y'all yesterday that Bishop Whitehead had gotten, where is it? Here we go. Bishop Whitehead, who boasted of ties to Eric Adams, is convicted of fraud. He was accused of using 90000 of a parishioner's retired savings to buy luxury goods and trying to force a businessman to lift, lend him another $500,000. We, we talked about this last night. He was convicted. Five counts, including wire fraud, wire fraud, attempted extortion, and lying to the FBI prosecutors. All that, y'all. Well, now he's online basically trying to say Afghan and people you know i stand on my innocence right i'm innocent of all charges this was not about bishop whitehead y'all this was politically driven me and the mayor were close he was a mentor of mine and i was targeted so i ask you guys to really be um sensitive that i have children that look at your your posts and i've not did the woman have children that you stole that money from alleged well not alleged you're convicted you're over here doing the head tilt i told you guys people's favorite thing to do is tilt their head so that you can see that they're in a rolls royce you're over here asking us to care about your children when you destroyed somebody else's family's life that's what you want we're supposed to think about your children what about this lady maybe her children didn't want somebody calling her fat online but she did talk about one is viral i did you a favor you know, i don't need no favors from you larry my, but my question to you, you is you about you you Larry, talk. You excuse do, me, you do. ma'am. I don't even know you, ma'am. All right, but so you can just stay out of this one. I don't but even know you. All right, I don't even know you. You, 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 you're trying to include you're yourself into this. Help. You need to go and get some weight loss. If you're, <laughs> you're fat. That's what you are. You're okay. a fat slob. And okay, laughing so at the same time. Go there, and, yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there, Biggie. Get out my life, Biggie. Biggie big, not Biggie Smalls, but you're Biggie big. And y'all want to see it talk about? Oh, it's thumbtacks. It ain't no damn thumbtacks in my church. It ain't no thumbtacks in my church. Whatever it is, it's ugly. And you got All enough right. money to change. But, 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 Larry, 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 you're ugly. The he had a lot of mouth over then, but now you want us to worry about what your children are going to see online when you're convicted of taking this woman's money. Never done anything to you guys, right? And I'm still a man of God and I still preach the word of God, no matter what you guys think. But what if, just say, what if I'm not guilty? People are laughing and people, you know, I stand on my innocence, right? I'm innocent of all charges. This was not about Bishop Whitehead. Y'all. He's a kind this artist. This was politically driven. Me and the mayor were close. He was a mentor of mine and I was targeted. So I ask you guys to really be um, sensitive that I have children that look at your, your posts and I've never done anything to you guys, right? And I'm still a man of God and I still preach the word of God, no matter what you guys think. But what if, just say, what if I'm not guilty? People- You're, You got convicted, you're guilty. Who in your church still believes that you are not? Y'all, you know we got to do it. Come on, none of it's true. None of it's true. It's BS. They made it up. They lie. This was him online. Shout out to Really Be for catching this. Um, understand that, you know, we're human too, right? And I know, you know, this is, this is, this is what the world is. You know, we laugh at people's downfall. You know, we laugh when people are down and out. 
Um, but um, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's all right. You know, everybody's entitled to their opinion, right? Everybody's, everybody's entitled to their opinion. And that money looking funny because he was wearing Fila in the other. Uh, <laughs> he went from the fake Gucci's to Fila. And um, I just want y'all to know that, you know, Bishop Whitehead, I'm here. Um, God is with me. God is in control. And I just want y'all to understand that my faith is not wavering. You know, my faith is not wavering. And as long as my faith stays strong, I'm going to be all right. Um, Lock him up. So I just wanted to tap in. I'm not going to turn the comments off. Y'all. That's too much. I, you know, let people talk. Let people say what they got to say. And, you know, when God shows up and when vindication hits, then, you know. Somebody said he was robbing people. That's what it is. Um, hey, how you doing? You know what you did. Um, I know a lot of you guys that really, truly love God. And really You're going to go back to jail. The and the work of God that I do. I know that a lot of us are. Not all about the people. And, um. Wait, and, um, all about the tea told him to get a good night's rest, hang in there. All about the tea loves Bishop Whitehead? Am I missing something? Monica, you know something that we don't? You never know. Just surprised. But like I said, don't lose faith and don't lose hope. Don't drop the soap. Right? I don't want you to give up on God. You know, I, I I I don't want you I don't want you to give up give up on God, y'all. We prayed, and a divine delay is not a divine denial. Somebody right? said your lip looks like you've been eating pig feet. A divine delay is not a divine denial, right? And um, you know, y'all y'all can't y'all can't uh, believe everything you read, and you just got to be careful because he was his only witness in the court case. Folks are just trolling. <laughs> I need to find out what all about the team knows. You, you know, know, God still lip has gloss popping, right? And God has my family covered, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it looked like right now. Somebody said God prison, prison, prison. And I just wanted to tap in <laughs> and um, just to encourage each and every one of you that was praying, you know. <laughs> they were praying that, that was, you was going to give that woman her money back. That was the only prayers that was being said, not for you to get away with the crime. Praying for me and my church family leads up to my international ministries. Somebody told him to go to Bali. Marcella told him, go to Bali. <laughs> like Russell Simmons. Um, And just everybody. Everybody that's been, you know. Y'all are messy. Uh, just standing on the wall <laughs> and standing in the gap for me. Y'all are messy. But, um. I, that's only I'm not I'm not coming back on to talk about this anymore. I'm definitely not going to talk about the case. Um, it's in the hands of my attorneys, and they're going to do what they have. They failed. Uh, Sassy girl said you may be come out the bushes with the pow pow effect. Shout out to Petty King. Petty King be having me talk about what is viral. I did you a favor. You know, I don't need no favors from you, Larry. My, but my question to you, you is: about you do though. You Larry, talk. excuse you, me, you, you, ma'am. I don't even know you, ma'am. All right, so you can looking. just stay out of this one. I don't but even know you. All right, I don't even know you. You, 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 you're trying to include you're yourself into this. Help. You need to go and get some weight loss. If <laughs> you're fat. That's what you are. You're okay. a fat slob. And okay, laughing so at the since same we time. Go there, and, yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there, Biggie. Get out my life, Biggie. Biggie big, not Biggie Smalls, but you're Biggie big. And y'all want to see it? Talk about. Oh, it's thumbtacks. It ain't no damn thumbtacks in my church. It ain't no thumbtacks in my church. Whatever it is, it's ugly. And you got All enough right. money to change. But, 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 Larry, 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 you're ugly. The, uh, he should have had a, Whitehead should have had a conversation with Diddy. I'm going to show y'all how we have fun and stay out of jail, too. Mm. And make money. He, he should have had a conversation with you. I'm going to show y'all how we have fun and stay out of jail, too. Mm. And make money. I'm so tired of all these scammers. Like, low-key, y'all. I am seriously so tired of all these scammers. Um, I recently just found out how, like, clergy people don't have to pay taxes. And it's way deeper than what I thought and some of the tax stuff that you see in the books. 
And I'm just sitting there listening to this kind of stuff. And I'm like, God damn. So it's about money for everybody. You literally were arguing about whose Rolls, Rolls Royce was newer, knowing good and goddamn well you had stole that woman's money. And we're trying to force somebody else to give you another $500,000 loan so that you could keep up this lifestyle in your McMansion, in your Rolls Royces, and in your fake Fendi and Gucci suits. And even in this moment, you're not, you're not like atoning. You are still trying to convince people that you are not a criminal. That's a problem, y'all. He over there. This ain't stealing. This ain't stealing. It's trash. It's a def. It, it, it's so. I joke and I laugh, but this is disgusting. You were convicted. You're trying to come up with a conspiracy theory instead of saying, I effed up. Let me get this woman her money back. Even in that video I just showed you guys, he really wanted y'all to see he was in a he was in a Rolls Royce. This, even in this, he wanted you to see he was in a Rolls Royce at all cost. He didn't care about anything else other than that. It's it's trash. But I just wanted to come on just to encourage each and every one of you that have been praying. And we have don't need encouragement fasting. from you. Don't give up. We don't, want to encourage you to pay that up. woman her don't money. Give up on God. Don't give up on God because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Right? And um, <clears throat> he's still good, y'all. Um, we have to understand that there are many men in the Bible that had to go through a lot of things. Uh, Jesus went through some things. Joseph went through some things. Paul went through some things. I think you missed the one that you were closest to, Judas. Because you led your flock into believing you, you led them astray, and then absolutely stabbed them in the back. Judas, don't say any of the good disciples. Mm -mm. Judas is who you are most closely related to. Um, um, just so many men, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Jonah. Judas. A lot of powerful men in the Bible had to go through some things, y'all. And if we say that, we trust God and we trust the Bible, right? Uh, you know, we have to live it. We have to live it. And, and you know, there, there is some, you know, I'm looking at the comments and there's some really, um, there's some really uh, mean people out here. <laughs> you just call really that woman Biggie Small. Here, right? And, um, you know, it's all good. You know, it's, it's really all good. And yeah, I am blocking people at it as they come up and saying things. Um, Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm blocking while, while I'm talking. <laughs> but um, I just ask you guys to have some courtesy for my family and have some courtesy for my children, the ones that have, you know, common sense. Um, and um, y'all just stay focused. Y'all stay firm. And, and just remember, man, you know, God is always in control. I'm here. I'm going to be preaching on Sunday. And I'm going to be preaching until um, I can't preach no more. I, I'm a preacher, so I can't preach no more. I'm still going to be right here. Um, I'm still going to be an encouragement. I'm still going to be uh, promoting Jesus, right? And I ain't giving up on him. And I ain't giving up on him. And this is my time where, this is my Job season where I have to stand 10 toes down. You know what I mean? I have to stand 10 toes down and I have to believe God. You know, that's it. That's it. 10 toes down and I have to believe God. Um. Um. So, yeah, so clank the clank, clank the clank. Really? The bar soap? Thank yeah. You. you might want to help your husband. You know, thank you. Thank you for all clank your prayers. Clank. Thank you for everybody that was clank fasting. Clank. Thank you for everyone that had me and my family in your heart, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And when God. Y'all, I told you guys, anybody who wants you to know they're in a Rolls Royce, this is how they're taking their pictures. You got to see the R. Lean to the side. Y'all remember I told you, that's the new thing. This is how girls take pictures in a rose truck. Y'all see what he's... <laughs> you see it in real time. This is how girls take pictures in a rose truck. Right. 
That's what it's given. Decides to give the vindication. Um, you know, it will it, it, it will be done. All right. Um Let me say this to you. I'm guilty. Everybody has a season. Right? Everybody has a season. And um, you can laugh at me all you want with this at this season of my life. Right? Um, but what I do know is I serve a God that is nobody's bigger than him. Nobody's better than him. You serve a fallen angel named Satan. And um, just because it seems this way right now, I'm still looking forward to, to God unchanging hand. Amen. All right, y'all. So um, y'all stay up. I'm staying up. I'm keeping a smile on my face and I'm pushing forward. Thank God for my family um, and all of the calls that came from my family and the ones that um that have been praying against me. Clank the clank. Clank the clank. Really? The bar soap? Yeah. You might want to help um, your husband. Uh, I think Viola Davis had some words for you. Yeah. It was like an anal probe. It was like, I mean, stretching it. And so, clank the clank, clank the clank. Really? The bar soap? Yeah. You might want to help your husband. <laughs> You're guilty. Next day. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Sandra said he's trying to get some money for his commissary. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> y'all have a good night. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Um, I think that there might even be something on the works with Russell Simmons. I think maybe something's going on with Russell. So if, if I find that, I'll definitely bring that to you guys, uh, tomorrow but other than that y'all have a good night like the video on your way out we didn't get a whole lot of likes tonight um it's a free way to support the channel so and i, and I got another cash app let's see um tanya thank you so much for your cash app i appreciate you um but on that note y'all have a good night i'm gonna see y'all tomorrow <laughs> i just got here y'all wrong we're you know we're, we're a bit of we're a little mess tonight but that's all right <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.